In this video, what we're going to do is talk about adding vectors mathematically when they are perpendicular to each other. So we did that problem graphically in class. And uh, for cohort A, you had this problem, which was 10 meters per second south and then 7 meters per second east. And I apologize because cohort B, I did vector A was the east one and B was the south one. So I apologize for that. Um, so there's a little bit of a distinction between uh, notation between them. Uh, I'm just going to adopt the notation that I did with cohort B. So sorry, cohort A folks. Um, we're just going to name the east vector A and the south vector B, but it's the exact same drawing that we did. So it's the exact same resultant that you all got as well, where we had measured uh, what was going on. I think uh, the measurements are actually slightly different in the two different classes as well. So here we go. Uh, Whereas adding uh, vectors graphically, we set up our scale and whatnot. Here, let's say I'm just doing mathematically uh, and just so that we can have terms there. Vector A, we'll turn this to blue, was 7 meters per second east, and B was 10 meters per second south. Okay, uh, let's say I don't ask you to draw to scale. It is still a really good idea just to do a quick sketch of our vector addition, even when um, we're not doing things to scale. So let's say that that's the problem, and I'll put in my vector, uh, my resultant there, um, angle which is the reference angle, because remember that we want the uh, reference angle to the nearest horizontal, so it's that angle down that I care about. And so what I'm looking for here is the magnitude of vector r. Well, here's the thing. What I don't want to do is add vectors a and b, just by saying 7 meters per second plus 10 meters per second, because that makes no sense, folks, because here these are not the same type of quantity. That would be like adding uh, balloons to nickels or owls to balloons or whatever, bananas to, to strawberries, whatever it is. Things that go horizontally add to things that go horizontally and things go vertically add to things that go vertically. So we can't just add this and this. So what are we going to do with that? Well, here, I know you know that this is a right triangle and where we're going towards is Pythagorean theorem, but, Let's do this a little bit more formally. Hopefully you remember that the third method of what we were talking about uh, with adding vectors was the table method. So I want to go back to that table method. A, B, R. Okay. We said that the first column was the identity of all the vectors. The second column uh, and the problem that we did before was everything that was happening horizontally or along that east-west axis. So the same thing here, everything that's happening along the east-west axis, or if you want to call that the x-axis. And here, what we're going to do is separately all the things happening along the north-south axis or uh, the y-axis. So, once again, uh, let's we would have had uh, directionality imposed upon the page. And what we want to do here is exactly what we did before, which was pick positives, impose directionality. Another word that I'll use for that is what we want to do is make declarations. Declarations uh, is a nice way of saying assigning positive and negative along each axis. And notice that's a declaration. A declaration is an affirmative statement of something, right? I'm not saying that it's always true. I'm just saying for this problem we're making it true. I'm declaring it to be true. Uh, so let's say that we make east positive, which makes west negative, and then separately and independently, I'm going to do a declaration along the north-south axis. Here, my quantity goes south, so I'm going to make south positive, and therefore north is negative. So what am I doing here on my table? Well, I'm saying vector A. How much of vector A goes in the x direction? Well, 7 meters per second of it does, right? And it's east, which is in the positive x direction, so I put that down. How much of vector A goes in the north-south direction? Well, none of it does. That wouldn't make any sense. 
vector b in this case? Well, how much of it goes in the east-west direction? Well, none of it does. And how much it goes north-south? Well, all of it does. And does it go in the positive or negative north-south direction? It goes in the positive direction. And so there we go. So vector r, how much of vector r goes horizontally? Well, it goes positive 7 meters per second horizontally, but it also goes positive 10 meters per second vertically. So it goes east that much and south that much. So east and south. So that should make sense based on what we're looking in our picture. So now I know that this thing is going east and south. What I'm going to say here is I'm going to call this the part of vector r that is along the x-axis, or the, in this case, east-west axis. Now I'm going to give a name to that. I'm going to call it the x, or horizontal, component of r. Right? And its symbol is going to be r sub x. And it's a vector because it could go either east or west along that. Whereas this is going to be the part of the vector r that goes along the y-axis or the north-south axis. And I'm going to call that the y component of r, or r sub y. So when we're talking about what's the magnitude of r, what's the length of this, it's always going to be the square root of the magnitude of the part that goes along the x squared plus the magnitude of the part that goes along the y squared. And that's just Pythagorean theorem, right? Now, in this case, the part of r that goes along x is the same thing as a. The part of r that goes along y is the same thing as b, but that's not going to be true in a couple of minutes, so just hold on. So when I plug in, then, the square root of, and here, notice I'm just asking for the magnitude of it, so I'm just going to put in the 7 meters per second. I'm not assuming the plus or the minus because it doesn't matter here because it's going to get squared anyway, but this is just stripping out the direction because that's what magnitude does. Plus, and then we get 10 meters per second quantity squared. And then we're going to just throw that into our calculator. So here we go. I've got 7 squared plus 10 squared equals square root of that answer, and I've got that 12.2. Okay, 12.2 what? 12.2 meters per second. And there you go. That's pretty close uh, to, to what we got through our measured answer, which was great. And so that's the magnitude of R from a mathematical perspective. I still need that angle. So how would I find that angle mathematically? Well, I'm just going to use some basic trig on the triangle there. If I want that angle, what it's going to be here is that that angle of theta r is going to be the arc tangent, right? Because tangent, I know b and a, so it's going to be the arc tangent of, in this case, the magnitude of b over the magnitude of a. But in general, it's going to be the y part of r over the x part of r. Because um, since I want the reference angle here, which is always an angle to the horizontal, the side opposite that angle is always going to be a vertical part if I want a reference angle. And so there we go. That's going to be our equation for finding the reference angle for this vector r. So in this case here, the arc tangent of our y here is 10 meters per second over 7 meters per second. Once again, just the magnitude, so no positives or negatives asserted there. And so here, let's plug that in. And I'm going to go on this uh, calculator arc tangent of uh, 10 divided by 7. There we go. I get 55 degrees, which is actually pretty close to what we got before, meaning our answer from before was reasonably accurate. So let's finish it off. Vector r, then, is going to be 12.2 meters per second at 55 degrees. And then right here, this tells me my reference 
it's going to be south of east, which I could then just say south of east if I'd like to, uh, just for a little uh, shorthand. So there you go. That is the mathematical process for adding perpendicular vectors. Okay, now the next thing that I want to talk about in this video goes on a little bit more about the idea of components of a, a, a non-axial vector. So, what happens if vector A was, I don't know, 150 meters at 37 degrees north of east? Okay, so let's do this graphically and then we'll do it mathematically. North, south, east, west. All right, so here's our vector. Well, let's also pick a good scale. Let's say one centimeter is equal to, um, uh, oh, I don't know, 25 meters. All right, so there we go. Actually, no, we'll do one is to 15, so I get a nice long vector. Perfect. I'm gonna pick, I know it's going to kind of go up this way. Let's pick a logical starting point. I'm going to now throw down a reference line for that. Okay. And now here we go. So I have to first measure my angle. So that reference line also is now going to help me measure my angle. And so I know I'm going 37 degrees northward of the, the east line. So that's going to be um, 10, 20, 30. Seven, there we go, and then draw in the vector, which is going to be a 10 centimeter long vector. Okay, perfect. And label it vector A. Okay, uh, this angle here I'm going to call theta A because it is the angle that vector A makes with the reference. So, right there's theta A because I want to keep numbers off my diagram. So now notice here vector A looks kind of like our resultant from our previous problem at our angle. So I can say vector A goes north of east, but another way of saying it is that some of vector A is about going towards the east and some of vector A is going towards the north. So if I want to know what are the horizontal and vertical components of A, I'm asking what part of A goes horizontally and what part of A goes vertically. So here we go. What I'm going to do here is extend my reference line. And the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop in an altitude to turn this vector into a right triangle. Now I'm making sure that my protractor, if you notice, is lined up. There's my reference line through these lines. So the dotted line I'm about to draw is perfectly perpendicular to the other reference line. All reference lines are drawn dotted. All vectors are drawn solid. So if I were to ask the question, well, how much of this thing goes horizontally? Well, hopefully what you see is it is this segment here. Okay. Boom. And that is the amount of vector A that goes in the x direction. So how big is that? Well, here the magnitude of vector AX is equal to, it's eight centimeters long. And so if you notice that, that's gonna be 120 meters. So vector AX is 120 meters east. What about vector B or vector a, AY? How much of this that goes vertically? Well, here we go. That's that. So notice here, vector AX plus vector AY make up vector A. If I do that vector addition, they result in this. So the idea here is I can, uh, if I have two vectors that make up a third, that third can be broken down into other vectors, and that's the concept of components. So here, let's just measure the Y out. I think you can see pretty clearly that that is a six centimeter long vector. So the magnitude of AY is six centimeters, 
which is uh, using that 90 centimeters um, or 90 uh, meters and therefore vector a y is 90 meters north perfect so that's graphically doing that let's say I don't want to do that graphically I just want to do that mathematically finding components of vectors well I would start with a quick sketch a and then I would sketch into the components ax and ay and notice ax and ay always form a right triangle right and therefore vector a or rather excuse me angle a uh, theta a is always inside that right triangle and so here we go I can then find ax by doing trig functions so notice here ax what side of the triangle is that on well here compared to the angle that I know it's on the adjacent side so if it's on the adjacent side what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use cosine because the things I know here are the angle boom and the magnitude of the overall vector which is this so cosine of theta a in this case is equal to the magnitude of ax over the magnitude of a and so solving then the magnitude of vector ax is equal to the magnitude of the overall vector cosine of the angle the reference angle that the vector makes to the horizontal so doing this as a plug-in now, let's pretend I didn't do the graphical methodology, is equal to 150 meters cosine of 37 degrees. If I plug that in, 150 cosine 37 on this calculator, I get uh, 119.8 meters, 119.8 meters. Oh, that's pretty close to what my graphical answer is. And if I wanted to do the y component notice here that that's on the opposite side and so that would be sine of theta a is equal to a y over a okay opposite over a uh, hypotenuse and therefore I can say that vector a y is the magnitude of vector a times the cosine of theta a and that plug-in then would be 150 meters uh, cosine of 37 degrees and we can plug that in 150 uh, I say I did cosine again excuse me and it is sine very clearly from the previous step I apologize 150 sine 37 and that gives me 90.3 meters which is pretty close to what I got here okay so one more example on that. Uh, let's say I have a vector, I'm, I won't do this graphically, I have a vector Q, and vector Q is uh, 20 um, uh, meters per second at 15 degrees um, down of left. So what does that look like? Well, just from a sketch, um, well, 15 degrees. So there we go, Q, I wanna draw in Q sub X, Q sub Y, and then this is gonna be theta Q, right? And so if I wanted to find Q sub X magnitude, once again, that's gonna be on the adjacent side. And so I'd use cosine, so that would be the magnitude of Q, cosine of theta Q. If uh, you're not comfortable with trig and you wanna start with the proportion of cosine of theta Q is the, uh, adjacent over the hypotenuse. Go ahead, I'm always gonna start here because I'm gonna know that things on the adjacent side, it's gonna be the magnitude of the overall thing times the cosine. Um, there you go, so that would be 20 meters per second cosine of 15 degrees. So 20 cosine of 15. And you can see that most of that goes along the horizontal, 19.3, uh, and that makes sense because it's nearly horizontal. And then if I wanted to do the vertical, I would do Q sub Y is equal to Q uh, sine of theta Q, right? Or you could start with sine of theta Q is equal to QY over Q. I'm just gonna start here because it's always going to be um, the uh, magnitude of the whole thing times the sine if we're talking about this, the component opposite the angle. So 20 meters per second, sine of 15 degrees. 20 times sine 15, and I get 
five point, oh, I'll just go 5.2 meters per second. There you go. Nice and uh, clear there because that's the smaller side. So that makes sense. So finding components. So uh, from here, you're going to have a homework assignment where I'm going to ask you to do some uh, adding vectors mathematically that are perpendicular, um, both graphically as well as mathematically. And I'm going to have a couple of problems where you're going to find components of a non-axial vector. And then the next video that you're going to watch, you don't have to do anything with it, but it's going to set us up for class uh, for Thursday afternoon.